All right. Uh, today, Wells Fargo CEO John Stumpf, who does not like his job at this moment, mm -hmm. is testifying again before Congress this morning. Investigators found that his employees opened those two million bogus accounts to meet demanding sales goals. So there is mounting pressure, of course, for Stump to step down and for top executives to be held accountable. On Tuesday, Wells Fargo announced Stump would forfeit his stock awards worth about $41 million. And then last week, the Senate Banking Committee gave him, well, it was a verbal beating. They went after him hard. Listen. I want to commend the city of Los Angeles, the OCC, and the CFPB for their actions in the LA Times for bringing this to light. I was stunned when I learned of the breadth and the duration of the fraud committed by Wells Fargo. Okay, so you haven't resigned, you haven't returned a single nickel of your personal earnings, you haven't fired a single senior executive. Instead, evidently, your definition of accountable is to push the blame to your low-level employees who don't have the money for a fancy PR firm to defend themselves. It's gutless leadership. All right, there's Senator Elizabeth Warren getting a lot of praise. I think we all expected this and it happened for shaming uh, the CEO. Okay. So the man who got the legal ball rolling on all of this, L.A. City Attorney Mike Fewer, joins us this morning. Good uh, morning to it's you. It's great to be with you. Thank you for being with us. Just take us through. When did you realize the extent of this? So we first had suspicions because the L.A. Times published a report that went through some of the issues that have since come to light. I then instructed my staff to conduct an investigation because I wanted to determine whether we could validate the claims in the Times story. And we could. So we filed a lawsuit. Uh, and what was really interesting is what happened in the immediate aftermath of our filing that case. Uh, I used to be a legislator. If I would get five or six dozen phone calls on a given issue, I knew it was a big deal. We got a thousand phone wow. calls and emails from Wells customers current and former employees, and not just here in California, but across the country. And at that stage, we knew we were onto something extremely significant. And what were the customers saying to you? What was the general message that you were getting? Well, let's talk about what Wells itself has validated, that as many as two million accounts were opened without the consent of the customer. Think how outrageous that is. The bank misused your personal information to open an account that you never wanted and never expected. Isn't this call in another circumstance a identity theft? Well, you know, we actually in our complaint allege that there was that kind of breach of trust here. But an, another extraordinary thing happened. In many, many cases, the bank took money from an account you knew about mm -hmm. and put it into an account you didn't know about to pay fees that were accumulating in that account. And we've had customers call us to complain about an array of mm -hmm. issues, including customers who've called to say they had accounts going to debt collection and uh, they're concerned about their credit scores and other issues. This is so important because consumers in this country are at such a disadvantage mm -hmm. relative to the big institutions on which they have to rely. And this is just one example here. Well, you're vulnerable. You bet. I should be able to trust my bank, and the fact that I can't is a big problem. So what would it take, what will it take for Wells Fargo to fix this? Well, in our case, we constructed a settlement with the bank that requires Wells to make full restitution to residents of California, my jurisdiction is in the state of California, uh, it holds Wells accountable. Wells is paying, has already paid $50 million in fines, every nickel of which is going to be attributed to consumer protection. And of course, these practices are going to stop. All right. 5,300 people were fired. Right. Wells was proud to say that in the beginning. Yes. It doesn't look so good now. Yeah. Do you feel sorry for those people, the ones who were fired? Well, you know, I have incredible sympathy for the Wells employees, many of whom were low-level employees, caught up in this culture while they apparently were required to identify more and more ways for customers to have what Wells calls products. Uh, tremendous pressure. We've heard about uh, employees who were imploring their family members at Thanksgiving, please let's open an account. And a number of these um, employees got caught up in this. For, but for an employee under, I don't care what the pressure is, for an employee to open an account that you didn't ask for or transfer money without your knowledge is unacceptable. But what's more unacceptable is that high-level people within the bank haven't been held fully accountable. It isn't just low-level employees, employees here who obviously perpetrated some very serious wrongs. And that's one of the functions of the Congress right now is to get to the bottom of who ought to be held accountable. All right, we're looking at one here. She's been the center of attention. Now Stumpf is, but right. Carrie 
uh, Tolstat was yep. the big severance pay. We're here figures like 125 million dollars. Looks like she's not going to get that severance pay. Uh, and, and, and even stuff. Those are those people. But for people watching right now, yes, who have Wells Fargo's accounts, right. what redress do they have? Well, first of all, under our settlement. Those customers ought to be going into Wells Banks or uh, their branches or calling Wells to make sure that they are fully on top of what accounts they have, whether they're accounts they don't recognize, they should be jettisoning accounts they never wanted, they should be making sure they're not incurring fees they didn't expect, uh, they're entitled to restitution if they've had fees incurred that they didn't uh, expect to have happen, and most importantly, everyone watching this show should be vigilant about looking at their accounts to make sure that in whatever bank they have, mm -hmm. that they have the products they want. Did you settle for too little? No, nope. I'm very proud of what we did. Okay. <laughs> right, we're going to continue following this case. You talk about outrage. We're outraged by this as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, we, we misuse that word often, but in this yeah, case, this is an outrage. This is an outrage. Uh, come back and see us yeah. again, Mike. Thank you Good so much.